and he spake as a dragon. This power has lamb-like qualities to it. Who is the lamb in the Bible? The Bible tells us very clearly in John 1 verse 29, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. Jesus Christ, through the scriptures, is referred to as the Lamb that was sacrificed for our sins. And we find this particular power has two horns like a lamb. It has Christian principles as the foundation of this nation. It will be a young Christian nation. Our fourth point is this. It would have no kingly authority. It would have religious and political freedom. No religious authority, religious and political freedom in this country. Why would I say that? Have a look at this. Revelation chapter 13, verse 11. And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. Now notice something about these horns. If you look at these horns, they are simply just horns. But when you compare that with the first beast of Revelation chapter 13, it also had ten horns. But you'll notice the first beast has crowns upon the horn. Back there in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 and 2, we find that when this beast arose, it had ten horns, but it says it had ten crowns upon the horns. Now, what does a crown symbolize? It symbolized kingship, doesn't it? He said, with this particular power, the second beast power of Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, it would not have kings or queens ruling this particular power. This power would be a Christian nation, those horns, those two horns, those two lamb-like horns, those two Christian horns, as it were, would tell us, is telling us, that this nation would have the principles of freedom to choose who they would worship, the principle of freedom of who they would vote for. There'd be no kings, there'd be no queens, there'd be no popes ruling this system. This system would have religious and political freedom. There is no crowns on these horns. Was America founded upon the Christian principle of government, the separation of church and state? The two horns, those two powers of republicanism and Protestantism, of course it was, friends. That was the foundation of the United States of America. You see, friends, because of the persecution in many countries in Europe, the founding fathers of America looked for a place where they could have liberty and freedom to worship God according to the dictates of their conscience. The book, The Great Controversy, says this, And when God's hand seemed pointing them across the sea to a land where they might found for themselves a state and leave to their children the precious heritage of religious liberty, they went forward without shrinking in the path of providence. The Great Controversy 291. When the doors seemed to open up, they wanted liberty, they wanted freedom. They knew what persecution was. Persecution from the papacy, persecution from the Church of England, persecution from kings and queens. And they longed for freedom, to worship God according to the dictates of their conscience based upon the word of God. In the year 1620, on November 9, 102 pilgrims aboard the Mayflower, set foot on the shores of the New World. They were there looking for freedom, freedom to worship God, freedom to live their lives according to the dictates of their conscience. And the founding fathers of America, friends, said that they would have a country without a pope and a country without a king. The founding fathers of the USA came from a world where they were controlled by popes and kings and religious leaders. And friends, they wanted liberty. And they had to fight for their freedom. In the War of Independence, they fought for their freedom. The battle cry of the United States of America was, give me liberty or give me death. And as a result for fighting for their freedom in the War of Independence, the Declaration of Independence was ratified. And the revered document penned by Thomas Jefferson declared this, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The nation was to be governed by the people, for the people. Now, 13 years after the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution was ratified in 1789. Notice what it says in the First Amendment in the Bill of Rights. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment 
of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Friends, the Constitution of the United States of America guaranteed freedom and liberty. You see, friends, the founding fathers of the USA knew that the union of church and state equaled tyranny and that the separation of church and state equaled liberty. They had experienced that in the old world. They were now searching for a new world where they could worship God and have the freedom that they longed to have. And friends, the Dark Ages are a classic example of a union of church and state. You know, friends, the Bible upholds the position of the separation of church and state. When church and state, when church and government come together, usually the church starts pushing its laws onto the state, which then starts pushing them onto the populace, and people lose their freedom. In the Bible, the kings had their palaces, the priests had their temples, and they were separate. There was a separation of church and state. You know, we find an interesting story in the Bible. In Second Chronicles chapter 26, we find there King Uzziah tries to unite church and state. He goes down to the temple. And he decides as the king, he wants to burn incense in the temple, which was the priest's job. Well, the priest tried to stop him from doing this. He did not listen to them. He refused to listen. He goes into the temple to burn the incense and the Bible tells us that God smote him with leprosy and he eventually died as a result of that. Even Jesus himself advocated the separation of church and state to maintain freedom and liberty. In Luke 20 verse 25, Jesus said, And he said unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which be Caesar's and unto God the things which be God's. If it's the government, if it's Caesar's, give it to him. If it's God's, if it's the church, give it to them. But it's separate. Don't bring the two together. The United States was built on the power of religious and political freedom, friends. Our fifth identifying point is this. This power will become a worldwide power and authority. Why do I say that? Open your Bibles again. Let's look at Revelation chapter 13, looking at verse 12 talking about this second beast power. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. This second beast power is going to cause the world to worship and follow the first beast, the papacy. Only a worldwide power can cause the world to obey. Is the United States of America a worldwide power? I think we all know very well the United States of America is the world power today as we live. In, sep in uh, September 20, 2002, the Sydney Morning Herald had an article, and I think this short quote here summarizes the whole picture of America. It says, Now the United States dominates the world. With the rise of the New Age Roman Empire, how long before the fall? People are coming out of the closet on the world empire. Americans should admit the truth and face up to their responsibilities as the undisputed masters of the world. The fact is that no country has been dominant culturally, economically, technologically and militarily in the history of the world since the Roman Empire. Friends, the United States of America is the world empire in our world today. Let's just summarize these five points. This beast power would arise around the year 1798. It arose out of a sparsely populated area where there were no established nations. It would be a young Christian nation. It would have no kingly authority. It would have religious and political freedom. And fifth, it would become a worldwide power and authority. Friends, I believe the United States of America today is the only power on this earth that fits these marks. As we're coming right down to the end of time, we should expect to see that a power that fits these marks arise to world domination and the United States of America is that power today. There is no other power on the earth that fits any of these identifying marks as the United States of America does. But there's one more identifying mark the Bible tells us about. I want you to open your Bibles back to Revelation chapter 13 there. 